Here we are again, week three, three of the Age of Triumph vendor rotations. Uh, we're gonna cover all the roles, and this week has Iron Banner. Uh, so I'll go ahead and cover all the Iron Banner stuff first because it's a special freaking event. First vendor thing is the vendor weapon, the Unbent Shree. This is not a perfect roll, but counterbalance and perfect balance is pretty freaking solid. Really great. However, because Feather Mag and Lightweight aren't really a big deal to have on an eye rifle, it's not what quite you're looking for. Uh, the counterbalance and perfect balance is definitely what you want to get for, especially an auto rifle, that's going to be all over the place when you're shooting if you're just going to spray at people. You want to have an auto rifle that is just like a freaking laser beam. If you have an auto rifle that's a laser beam, you're in there. That's why Doctrine Passing is so good with counterbalance and was regarded to be like the best auto rifle of all time, especially being a legendary for PvP. So if you have this gun with counterbalance and perfect balance, you're pretty much in there. It's going to be like a laser beam. The only thing about this gun is lightweight and feather bag, like I said earlier, don't really do much for you. What you really want to get is like a crowd control or range finder or something that boosts like range or impact or something in this middle tree. Um, something that is for that first kill. You want to get something that helps you for that first kill. And if it's not for the first kill, it immediately helps you kill the second guy. Uh, feather mag, increasing reload speed for a smaller mag size, that's not going to help you out much. That's going to actually make it harder to get first kill because you have less of a mag size to work with, if anything. And then lightweight, plus two character agility is not that big of a deal. And actually it sucks if you're on Titan because it makes it harder to freaking Titan skate. So it's it's not really something you really want to look for that much. And if you really want to have a gun that's crazy agile, you just go with a minor multi-tool. Or run like Radiant Dance Machines or your Hunter or something like that. Like it's, it's not that highly valued of a perk, though it's about average as far as weapon perks go. It's not terrible, but not highly valued. Feather Mag is pretty bad for PvP purposes. PvE, eh, it can hit or miss, but you're taking away mag size for faster reload speed, but you wouldn't reload as much anyway if you had a larger mag size, right? So it's it's uh, basically a useless perk as far as like practicality goes. So Unbent Tree, overall, not a great weapon, and the perfect roll is not there. So I wouldn't really advise buying the vendor roll. Now the shotgun, which is funny, this is a PvP shotgun. You get it from a PvP event. However, this is a really good PvE roll with rifle barrel, a pendant magazine, and performance bonus. You have a lot of more shots to work with with a pendant magazine. You don't have to reload that often. Um, you can reload before the next wave starts, and it takes a long time before you have to reload again. Plus, performance bonus is going to help you get even more ammo economy so you can keep on shotgunning those waves of ads. With rifle barrel, you can kill ads at a longer distance. Rifle barrel is pretty much a staple perk to have on basically any shotgun, if possible. Uh, it just basically doubles the effective range of your shotgun. That, that's great. For a really close combat weapon, suddenly it's double the range. That's pretty convenient for a shotgun. Um, and if you don't care about ammo economy and there's ammo everywhere all the time and you're not concerned about it, life support PvE is fantastic. You just keep on warrioring against all the waves of ads. You'll probably heal yourself on one of those ads you kill, so you're in there. Fantastic role for PvE. Not great for PvP. Even if it had a great role, this shotgun is not a good archetype for PvP anyway because the range is pretty short. Impact's not the best possible. Um, but the rate of fire is so high that it makes it great for PvE. So, get this for PvE, even though it's a, you have to grind PvP to get it, which is, I always thought it would be a weird concept. Regarding armor for Iron Banner, armor has always been an Iron Banner vendor's, like, basically a perfect role for stats. Um, 58 is the highest you can get for the Discipline and like, Strength stats for Gauntlets. Both of these are 58 57. One off in perfect role. Uh, 35 for the Intellect Discipline here. It's a perfect role. Actually, just on realist, it's 35 33. So, not that amazing for the Discipline Strength option. But the Intellect Discipline option, perfect role. You're in there. For the Titans, one off for one, which is Intellect Discipline. But the other gauntlets are perfect 58 58. So, if you need a Discipline Strength gauntlets, perfect role, you have it. Iron Banner. Like I said, Iron Banner comes really nicely for a lot of those perfect role gear pieces. Uh, the Mark. It's like Discipline, 35-35 as well. But like the uh, Hunter's Cloak of Discipline Strength, this is 35-33. Uh, Not quite there, so you probably shouldn't go for it. To round out the Iron Banner vendor rolls for the Warlock, Intellect like Discipline, 58-57, 58-57, well, backwards, but whatever. One off for both the Gauntlets. The Bond for Intellect Discipline is also 35-35, and then Discipline Shrink is 35-33. So it looks like they're favoring Intellect like Discipline this week, uh, which is actually, or this month i guess for iron banner um but intellect discipline is definitely what i want to look for for almost every situation 
in PvP in the current meta. Uh, supers, reign supreme, grenades are in almost every single engagement. Um, and it's not that often that you'll be in melee range because you don't have shotgun ammo and sidearms kill at range and stuff like that. So just melees don't happen that often anymore. If you're looking for a primary Ingram chance out of palindrome or any other primary weapon, there is one at the Iron Temple. By the way, Scories, really high roll, though it's nerfed now and not a big deal anymore. Radagast is actually a pretty high roll and a pretty fun artifact to use in the PvP. And Member of Galleon, I don't really like the singular stat roll things, like the strength all the way to 109. I've never really seen that to be really optimal or very useful. Um, take it as you will, though. And it grants you the detailed radar and all that stuff, which is pretty nice, but not really that necessary. So... It's a convenient artifact, but not optimal for a competitive player or anything like that. But Radagast is very fun with like throwing back rockets and Nova Bombs and Golden Gun shots and stuff like that. It's pretty hilarious. And Scory, again, nerfed. Just just don't, don't get it. Just don't get it. Now regarding vendor rolls at the tower, back to the normally scheduled broadcast. Nothing exciting at Numarchy this week for the weapons at all. For the palindrome this week... So close to being kind of ridiculous because a sure shot, outlaw, and luck in the chamber, but has hammer forged without rifle barrel. Palindrome is basically an automatic no go. This week's curtain call is actually pretty good if you're looking for a new different shotgun from the Matador or something like that. Uh, Lena Conversator is probably going to be the best bet here because everything else reduces the range too much. Uh, close and personal is very nice because after that shotgun shot, if it doesn't kill him quite yet, your melee is pretty guaranteed to kill him after the follow-up. Uh, rifle barrel is very good on shotguns, basically a staple alongside a, a reinforced barrel. And crowd control is amazing because after you get that first kill, your second kill shot is going to do a lot of damage, more so than any other base shotgun shot in the game. I would have a lot of fun running Battle Runner alongside the crowd control because you get that first kill and you rapidly just run straight towards the next person and kill the second person. Having this set up alongside Fleetfoot and Blade Dancer actually sounds really fun and I'm really tempted to buy this and check it out for myself this week. With that said though, it's not your most optimal option for shotguns. It's just pretty good to have some fun with on the side if you're bored of the basic optimal Matador shotgun play. This week's Continental is very interesting. As I was talking about earlier, having your auto rifle shoot like a laser beam is very good. Count balance and perfect balance, I already said, are an amazing combo and basically do the job themselves. But this gun also has rodeo on top of it. If there is recoil while shooting the Continental, I will be shocked. There's three really good stability perks that you can have activated all at the same time. Auto rifles are just not really meta, but man, that just sounds so good. This Parthian shot is very, very good as well for, again, kind of stability purposes. A lot of things you look for in weapons is generally just range and stability. Uh, guns like this, the range is just fine at base, so you don't really need more range. But having perfect balance and counter balance combo, which is a pretty recognizable theme this week, is very good. Easy to land all your shots at a very long range, especially. It's not going to be a lot of recoil, so super long range like cross map shots which is what you're basically going to be doing with this kind of pulse rifle. Very slow rate of fire, can to burst, max damage at like very long ranges. Um, cross map, you're going to have a really good time landing all your shots. And even if you don't land all your shots, you have secret rounds. So that first shot if it's slightly off target. You have an extra bullet in that burst. So you're pretty much going to land three shots anyway. Now this Occam's Razor is not a great roll, and I don't really suggest buying this one specifically, but it did remind me of something that I want to discuss really quickly, is that's the perk of Replenish on Special Weapons. What Replenish does is the weapons magazine will be refilled whenever you unleash your super. So if you just cast your bubble, throw your bomb, activate your storm, whatever, even if you don't get a kill with it, just activating your super, which could even be like Radiant Skin on a Sunsinger, so you activate your super and then you instantly keep going around and you can keep shooting people. Replenish, even if you have no ammo whatsoever for your special weapon, gives you a full mags worth of ammo already reloaded into your gun. Uh, There's something that is really useful for clutch situations where ammo doesn't spawn for 30 seconds like in Trials, but then you go up to them and say like you go up and throw your Nova Bomb at the first target, and then suddenly, boom, you have a special weapon to use to take on other enemies on the team. You're instantly in a 3v2 with you having special ammo when they only have like at most like one icebreaker shot or like a couple of shots for their sidearm. You're in a huge advantage, especially since every other special weapon beats sidearms typically. 
as long as they have ammo in those special weapons. So be on the lookout for replenished perk on special weapons moving forward unless they change the special weapon loss on death uh, mechanic that currently affects the Crucible. Uh, but while that mechanic is still in play, replenish is going to be a very valuable perk to have on special weapons. The Bone Crusher is actually a pretty solid LMG for this week's roll. Uh, having crowd control means after you get that first kill, you can keep doing more damage for further kills. Uh, for an LMG, we can mow down waves of enemies. This is actually really good because it hits hard and kills small things like goblins, dregs, thralls, stuff like that very fast. Uh, this isn't a good perk at all for like a boss fight or something if you have unloaded a lot of damage, so look for a different LMG for that purpose. But for an LMG that you want to use to clear a lot of waves of enemies, Crowd Control is perfect. Rifle Barrel makes it even better damage at range. Don't worry about the reload speed though at negative because you have Feeding Frenzy, which boosts your reload speed on kill. And if you want even re more ridiculous reload speed, then you can go with Small Bore. Uh, that's fine too. You just have a smaller mag to work with, so not as many shots to utilize Crowd Control with, but... Still, Feeding Frenzy on an LMG, amazing. Crowd Control on a Wave Clearing LMG, also amazing. And Small Bore and Rifle Barrel are just fine perks, so if you want a Wave Clearing LMG, this is a good one for this week. The only fairly exciting thing for the Dead Orbit vendor this week is the Keystone 01 for PvE purposes. Uh, crowd Control, like I just said, is great for Wave Clearing, uh, especially on a high damage thing like a Scout Rifle. You're probably killing add in two to three shots tops, and that means you have a max size for about like five kills or something like that uh, you'll be able to just go ahead and clear out ads pretty quickly with a lot of damage on this kind of scout rifle having that alongside a third eye is very useful for pve because you'll be doing a lot of time adsing so having a radar while adsing is very nice it's a fairly slow rate of fire scout rifle so perfect balance isn't that necessary i would definitely would go third eye over perfect balance on this one and having quick draw is very nice and convenient so you can rapidly switch weapons when needed if your other weapon just ran out of ammo you need to get more damage just a little bit more instantly quick draw's got your back right there this vault would have been amazing like two months ago counterbalance perfect balance high caliber rounds on a waltz that would slay slay in the crucible however because they nerfed high caliber rounds of pulse rifles and hip fire is not very useful this suddenly becomes not really the most optimal role you can get on a waltz therefore not really worth picking up this week kind of sucks two months too late buddy that's it for the tower vendor weapons now moving on to armor future war cult warlock nothing really good enough to get only decent thing at the dead orbit for warlocks is the boots 79 which is perfect but 76 three off that's okay probably could do better out there shax is coming a little short this week for warlocks nothing really of worth the ghost is one off from perfect roll but if you got the ghost last week from dead orbit i believe it was then you should have a perfect roll discipline strength ghost so don't really bother buying this one. Finally, something I can suggest buying for a Warlock this week. Core Array, Discipline Strength, 35-35, Perfect Roll. Screw the Ghost from Shaxx just now. Here you go. If you missed the one from last week, here's another Perfect Roll Ghost this week for Discipline Strength. And it has a different new look from the Dead Over one, so at least now you have cosmetic options to work with. The best thing Warlock's got this week was a freaking Ghost from Core Array, which is a universal armor piece that you can wear on any class, so... Unfortunate. The new marquee is not any better than the other vendors. Um, funny enough, Ghost one off for Intellect Discipline. You should have been able to get a perfect roll last week, I believe, if you're paying close attention and being on prompt on purchasing those ghosts. Uh, but if you didn't, you have one that's one off perfect roll there, so at least you have something close. Switching over to Hunters for vendor rolls, the gauntlets are three away from the perfect roll. It has shotgun ammo though, so maybe for PvE usage, you might want to look into getting this. Otherwise, uh, it's not perfect roll, not optimal reloader for PvP purposes, so uh, not really that great. Uh, the boots are 79 on strength, but the discipline is 5 away from a perfect roll, so not amazing either. And nothing else is really worth looking at. I was excited about this because 78, 79 is like, oh my god! But then I remember these are not boots. Chess pieces go up to freaking like 86. <laughs> Now for Shax's Hunter Selection, Helmet's not great. Gauntlets are a little far off, like four total, I think, from Perfect Roll. Boots pretty far, Cloak pretty far, but the chest piece, one away from Perfect Roll, because 86 is the max you can get. 86, 85, that's better than what I currently have. I'm excited. 
I finally get an almost perfect roll chest piece for Hunter. Thank yeah. God. Honestly. Get that. It's going to be very rare in a very long time. Most likely until you get a chest piece better than that Shaq's chest piece at the Crucible Vendor this week. This one's not even close at the Vanguard. <laughs> Cade, Shaq is stepping you up this week, buddy. You got nothing good, it seems. Yep, nothing good. Maybe next time, Cade. Get some more green goo in you. Step up your pace. For Dead Orbit, these gauntlets are two away from perfect. 58-58 is perfect. These are 57-57. Almost freaking there. Sniper Rifle Reload Speed is actually really amazing for PvE because a lot of times for like boss battles, especially in like raids, you'll be using a Sniper Rifle to optimize damage for the boss. So Sniper Rifle Reload Speed makes you be able to shoot a lot more sniper shots more often. So I definitely recommend getting these gauntlets for PvE content. And finally, for a future Oracle on the Hunter, the helmet's five away from perfect roll. 65-65 is the highest you can go. So that's okay if you have nothing better. At least you can look at it. Uh, and the cloak is perfect 35-35. Switching over to the final class of the week, the Titan at the Future War Cult. Nothing is really close at all to a perfect roll, so don't worry about it. Dead Orbit's looking equally as bad as Future War Cult did. Nothing really of worth for Titans this week. Shucks. For Shaxx the Titan, the closest thing of worth is a helmet, which is 5 away from perfect roll. 65 is the highest, so 65-60 is kind of close, but still... Titans are not having good weeks so far, similar to the Warlocks. <laughs> Continuing the pattern of screwing over Titans this week, Zavala is not providing much of anything at all, not even anything of worth in the Ghost section. And this week is rounded off with just utter disappointment for Titans, nothing really of worth at all. The boots are four away from perfect roll, which is it's, it's okay. If you have nothing else better, you can look at it. It's, it's, it's almost there. It's just not really nearly good enough to recommend. Uh, I really only recommend it if it's within like two, maybe three, if uh, the perks are really amazing at three away. But uh, if you have nothing better, then at least it's something, right? But overall, it sucks to be a Titan or Warlock this week for the vendor rolls. Feels great to be a Hunter at a one off of a perfect roll chest piece. That's really great. Plus the class items as well for the Hunter. So this week definitely goes to the Hunters. Hopefully this video helped you in some way. Thank you so much for being you and thank you as always for watching. Adios.